Before this video, the only thing I knew about Pink Floyd was that they were the classic rock band that had the album with the rainbow coming out of the prism or whatever. I honestly couldn't even tell you what decade they came from, like the 60s, the 70s, or the 80s. But to get to know them a little better, I'm gonna spend the next seven days listening to every single Pink Floyd album. And according to their website, there are 14 studio albums. And the rule is, I have to listen to every single album before listening to anything twice. And my second rule, which is kind of like a bonus rule, I have to make some type of social media video with one of their songs and post it. And after listening to each album, I'll give my top three songs and maybe some honorable mentions if I have some. At the end of the video, I'll give my top three songs overall and then my top three albums overall. So this is a very short surface level explanation of Pink Floyd. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pink Floyd was formed in 1965 and started as a psychedelic rock band in London. Founding members include Sid, Roger, Nick, and Richard, and eventually David came along, and they were known for their experimental music and their elaborate live shows. Over the decades, they became one of the best-selling artists of all time and are arguably one of the greatest rock bands of all time due to their unique sound and thought-provoking lyrics. And before I started, I did ask a couple of my friends what their honest thoughts were on Pink Floyd. What do you think about the band Pink Floyd? Do you Pink know who, Floyd? Do you know who that is? I do. Very little about them. Like how little? Like my teacher in high school would always wear the shirt and say that his favorite band was Pink Floyd. Oh. I would say Pink Floyd is one of the greatest bands in history. Feel free to use this statement because it's how I feel about it. I think that the only people currently like our age and younger that listen to pink floyd are the ones whose dads listened to pink floyd <laughs> i don't i don't know if there's anybody just discovering pink floyd uh unless they saw one of the overworn uh dark side of the moon t-shirts or something <laughs> so the first half of my day was my drive to work work and then my drive home but within that let's to the first album which is the piper at the gates of dawn and i'm just gonna be honest it was not what i expected i mean i don't know exactly what i had to expect but i had to like kind of active as if i was in that time period so like 60s 70s obviously i don't have any experience during that time period i mean one thing that did help was that i personally know how to play the drums so bands with amazing drummers like keith moon john bonham or even lenny white have always been like top tier drummers and as i learned to play i always consider people like them as some of the goats when it comes to drumming and so when i heard like the drums in the song i, I tend to pay attention to that first before like any guitars or anything like that and Sometimes I like the song based on that. Sometimes it just gives me a different feeling. And so I don't know if that like technically helped me get through some songs that I didn't really feel like were interesting. But let me just say that even if I didn't find it interesting, I still appreciate and acknowledge the talent behind each thing. Anyway, as I was leaving work and trying this crazy looking shot, I was actually looking forward to finishing this first album and jumping into the next one. And before I list my top three songs from the first album, let me just remind you that this is just after listening through each album once, listening to each song one time, and it could change by the time you watch this video. So now I'll tell you my top three from the Piper at the Gates of Dawn were Take Up the Stethoscope, The Gnome, and Astronomy Domini with the Scarecrow, Bike, and Interstellar Overdrive as my honorable mentions. I will say the best part about doing this with the band Pink Floyd is that because I know nothing about them, I don't know a song that I recognize yet anyway, uh, I don't know any of their hit songs, I don't know any mainstream songs, so subconsciously I'm not like choosing that song as a top song. Because as of right now, I feel like as I go through each album, I won't even be able to guess what song is like the mainstream or the most popular song on the album. Right when I got home, I had to take apart this table because I sold it on Marketplace and I had to meet up with somebody to give it to them. And I was listening to a saucer full of secrets in the process. I got through two albums so far. And to be honest, the feeling that I'm feeling or what I'm thinking is that I'm kind of just still in cruise, get through it mode. I'm not like listening out of obligation because it's not bad. But at the same time, I feel like it's gonna get better. So I'm like optimistic, if that makes sense. My top three from A Saucer Full of Secrets were Let There Be More Light, Corporal Clegg, and Jug Bland Blues with A Saucer Full of Secrets and Remember a Day as honorable mentions. During the self-titled song, A Saucer Full of Secrets, I was like, oh, we hitting that psychedelic mood. And then Remember a Day, for some reason, it gave me like a Beatles vibe. I don't even listen to the Beatles on the regular like that, but I, like from what I know of the Beatles, it just reminded me of this. We had a pretty packed day, so today I only listened to one album, which was the album More, but I did that while I was doing stuff around the kitchen. And let me just go and say that stuff still sounds weird from this album. But here's my top three 
The Nile was number one, followed by Cymbeline or Cymbeline, whatever. Then more blues with Up the Kyber and Ibiza Bar as honorable mentions. And right now, I would say my mood towards everything so far is just meh. But I did take the time to look into some lyrics, if any, to hopefully get a better understanding. The last thing I will say is that Up the Kyber was an interesting and amazing experience while using headphones. And I was thinking like maybe I should use headphones for the rest of the song. At this point, I kind of just feel like it's just a listening experience. Like a lot of the tracks seem like experimental music, but I'm also reminding myself that this is just how the music was back then. Maybe. Because Umagama was just wild to me because multiple times throughout the album, I was like, what is going on? Just like I don't know what Umagama <laughs> means, I feel like I didn't know what that entire album meant. I almost feel like it was, uh, it's like a soundtrack to like a classical movie or something like wizard of oz wizard of oz like the wizard of oz. why can't i say that which is interesting that i said that but i'll explain that later it would just be interesting it's if i were to see them live in concert perform all this around that time period so my top three for umagama were grant chester meadows the narrow way part one and careful with that acts eugene Honorable mention is Astronomy Domini Live. And I just hope that the next album isn't weird because tomorrow is a big day for me. So today is a big day because today, shocker, I'm going running by the way. Today is the start of my training plan for the New York Marathon. 16 long weeks, time to put in some work. And I thought, oh, you know, Pink Floyd's albums so far have primarily been like instrumental. And I was like, oh, this would be a nice cool, chill run. I saw that the next album was only five songs um, and I was like oh I'll listen to that on the way to where I'm running and then you know I'll listen to the next album and then I realized that the album is actually 52 minutes long. The first track I didn't even finish it before I got here. It's like 23 minutes long but it's 5 53 a.m. I have six miles to do and according to this app it should take me 50 to 55 minutes. Let's get it. Man that wasn't like I'm fine physically, but it was a little rough mentally or musically, I guess. I don't know. Here's the obligatory run photo of my watch. First of all, I use these headphones uh, it's called shocks. They're bone conducting. You can hear your surroundings and the music, but it was a good and bad thing because I could hear my shoe. There's something in my shoe. I tried to check to see what it was, but it just kept making this really annoying noise. But I did get through Adam What's, what's that album called? Adam Hart Mother in my top three are definitely Summer 68, If, and believe it or not, the self-titled song, Adam Hart Mother. Long behind song, but I like it. I did listen to the first three tracks of metal. And so on my way home and for the rest of the day, I'll listen to that. <sighs> Man, I'm so tired. I finished metal on the way to work. And I gotta say, my top three, even though there's only six songs on the album, my top three are San Tropez. Uh, what's the name of it? What's the name of it? Uh, Seamus, that's the dog that's outside. And believe it or not, I'm gonna put Echoes because it had a groove. It, it did throw me off though. I was like driving and then there was a sound that sounded like a siren and I was like looking for it, but it was in the song, you know? I'm gonna listen to the next album while I ride my one wheel to where I need to go for work. I forgot my helmet, but safety first, everybody. Safety first. Even if you don't think you need one, they save lives. So between work and all the other stuff that happens in my life, I started Obscured by Clouds, and then I just decided that I'm just gonna finish that tomorrow. Yeah, so I was running again, and I finished the Obscured by Clouds album at the end of my run. And my top three are The Gold, It's in the Childhood's End, and Free Four, Honorable mentions are Stay and Mudman. This album to me was more instrumental and I really think that if you just don't like or can't appreciate just a good instrumental jam session, then you're not gonna like it. Like you might just think Pink Floyd and anybody similar that their music is just boring. Cause to me, people that grew up in that time period or just around that period or listened to that music as they were growing up, regardless of when they are born, they're used to that. And so they appreciate it more than people that don't. Same concept applies to when like auto-tune came on the scene or even dubstep or something similar. Who knows, maybe 30 years from now, all the 20 somethings will think all the music from today's time is just weird or just bad. Anyway, I started The Dark Side of the Moon on my way to work. And honestly, I was looking forward to this one because this is the one that I saw everywhere. So let me just say that the song Money, I really enjoyed that song. Money! But today I think my main goal is going to be to figure out 
what kind of social media posts I can make. Uh, I have no idea. I don't have any ideas. And considering that I haven't listened to the rest of their songs yet, I don't know what song I'm gonna use yet. But right now it's money. I can tell you that. It's money. Money is money. The song money is money. So if you want to see that video and how it came out, head on over to my Instagram or TikTok to see it. Also, let me know that you came from YouTube. So my top songs from the dark side of the moon are Money, Us and Them, and Breathe with Time and Any Color You Like as honorable mention. So remember when I said this? I almost feel like it was, uh, it was like a soundtrack to like a classical movie or something, like Wizard of Oz. So apparently if you play the dark side of the moon and watch the Wizard of Oz, the lyrics will sync up to what's going on. I personally probably won't have time to do that within this week but I think that's interesting. So as I went home during my lunch, I started Wish You Were Here and eventually finished that because it was only five tracks, but it was still 44 minutes long. My top three were Wish You Were Here, Shine On You Crazy Diamond parts one through five and Have A Cigar. I actually added Shine On You Crazy Diamonds parts one through five and parts six through nine to my Around The House playlist on my Spotify. To me, they were just good songs or good grooves to have like in the background where you're just doing whatever you're doing. I don't know if I've just been busier this past week or I've had to like actually go into work a lot more because I usually work from home a lot. But I haven't like I haven't gotten through the albums as quick as I thought I was going to. I still have like five or six more albums left. Uh, but today I'm working from home all day. So hopefully that'll help the process because when I'm at work, I can't really listen to it because I'm talking to people and all that kind of stuff. And I know what I just said might contradict my location. I'm currently in the car, but I am on the way to get coffee for me and Abigail. <laughs> So instead of boring you with all my normal day stuff like work and taking my car to get checked out, I got through Animals, The Wall, Final Cut, and A Momentary Lapse of Reason, which was a lot, honestly, but I managed to listen to all of that in almost every part of my day. For Animals, I got dogs, pigs, and sheep. Animals. <laughs> For The Wall, I got Another Brick in the Wall, Part 2, Comfortably Numb, and In the Flesh with Young Lust as an honorable mention. Another Brick in the Wall, Part 2 was the only song so far that sounded familiar to any degree. And the trial to me just felt like I was listening to a musical. But overall, the album was better than a lot of them that I've heard already. For Final Cut, I got The Gunner's Dream, Your Possible Past, The Fletcher Memorial Home with Two Sons as an honorable mention. And I go gonna lie, when that saxophone came in during that album, I was like, mmm, that's good right there. But I will say, I felt like I was listening to like the soundtrack of a musical play or a movie of some sort. So obviously there's stories and themes with each of these albums, which I'll get to later, but I just want to let you know, just in case you're deciding to listen to Pink Floyd for the first time, or maybe you didn't even realize it. I was also thinking during this album about their first album and how much of a different it is. Like this one, it's not as psychedelic feeling as the first couple of albums, which also leads me to a momentary lapse of reason. And for that album, I have Learning to Fly, on the turning away and yet another movie it just like overall had what i would consider a classic rock vibe shocker going for another run i'm actually running and starting the album the division bell wow this is really low to the ground so hopefully that's good and it's high but i finished the album well i mean i'm in the middle of the song uh high hopes but i'm gonna finish that as i get ready to go take a shower my top songs from the division bell were take it back Coming back to life, keep talking with what do you want from me and pulls apart as honorable mentions. And even though I didn't complete my goal of finishing all the rest of their albums, I only had one album left to listen to tomorrow. So there's not much to show from the last day other than the fact that I finished The Endless River, which was basically an instrumental album. So I chose side one, part two, it's what we do. Side two, part two, skins. And side four, part three, surfacing as my top three with side four, part four, louder than words as an honorable mention. And once I finished that, I began my free for all with their music which primarily came from my top three albums and the This Is Floyd playlist on Spotify. And now I know they have like other live albums and other remastered albums, but I listened to all their original ones. Could it have enlightened my experience to listen to the live version? Sure. And that could be the case for any artist, but I wanted to make sure I got their core music first. I also did my own research to help me understand the lyrics better and the overall themes of each album, like how the album Animals describes society's classes as dogs, pigs, and sheep, which it has tracks named so. They clearly went from like full on psychedelic, maybe not full on, but a lot of psychedelic uh, instrumental music really to what they are now, more of the classic rock thing. So if you're a diehard classic rock person, don't come after me too harsh. Just be glad that I'm like broadening my horizon as far as music goes. So overall, my top three songs are Another Brick in the Wall, Part Two, Money, and Learning to Fly. My top three albums were The Dark Side of the Moon, Division Bell, and The Wall, although I really did like Wish You Were Here. Like with any artist, you have diehard fans and then you have 
fans in general and then you just unfortunately have people that just don't like them. Personally, I enjoy this challenge because it was music that was way off of what I listen to on a daily basis. I could see myself every once in a blue moon just kind of listening to some of the songs that I've listened to, some of the songs that I listen to that I like. And although parts of it were weird, it reminded me of one simple phrase, don't knock it until you try it. Sunday morning feels quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it, kinda how I feel with you.